Good morning, good morning, good morning again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, in the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center really doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Excuse me. Neuroclastic has refused, so folks, you know the drill. Please read that article and don't forget to share it on all your social media. We also got linked in their No Clastics public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through with their threat. We also got the pertinent links to the Agape Boarding School slash Stone for Help school situation. Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help, is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has impending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it. These claims, in spite of what the principal wants you to believe, have all been substantiated from the hard evidence gathered in the investigation done by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, and that's just for starters. You've had one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on premises with full access to the boys in spite of the rebranding. Still there after being up on multiple, again, substantiated claims with hard evidence of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general who's yet not said a single goddamn word regards to Agape or how they're trying to get around the law by changing their name. You got another governor who's so far up Trump's ass that he can't seem to give a shit about anyone in Missouri, not even abused children. So, folks, please read that article. It's from Ozark First. We're going to start rebuilding that archive. Please share it all out on your social media. I imagine that the petition that was out is going to be edited so that we can include the school's new name and get you all updated on the most latest information. We got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject. A link to the behavioral sheet of shockable offenses provided by Jennifer Masamba. A clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002. The templates and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and talk about dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger, parental supervision is very obviously advised. Trigger warning, we are about to descend into the nonsense cut coal, mad ravings of a lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear lies, gaslighting, victim blaming, pseudoscience. Enough, uh, basically enough bigotry and ableism to circle the globe a few thousand times. And just Dr. Matthews out and out stupidity where he thinks he's so above everyone else. He feels like he gets to contradict his own words and we're still not allowed to question it. So just be prepared for that. All right. Adversive therapy is not experienced by JRC students as tortures as witnessed by their own testimony. Many view it as extremely helpful or even life-saving treatment. Okay. This is where he's going to use his propaganda videos as his defense. This is why it falls flat. Any individual who is coerced by someone, especially when they are young kids, 
to do a video by those who are in power. And when those specific individuals in power have the ability to cause them grave harm, if they do not perform as asked, that means their testimonies are invalid. It's called coerced. This is why such things tend to not fly in court. Okay? Someone saying it really saved my life when under threat, when they have a staff member about five feet back with a remote control device that can shock them if they see anything other than what the JRC tells them to do, it's not a true testimony, nor would it even be considered by anyone to actually be one. Many people will do whatever the hell you want in order to make the torture to stop or to stop it from occurring. So you have to forgive me, doctor, if I see this bullshit for what it is. But let's read here, shall we? Current former students at JRC have never made a single complaint to state agencies that they have been subjected to torture or abusive treatment involving the GED skin shock, despite the fact that a great many of the students who have received this treatment are fully capable of expressing their thoughts and feelings to others and making a complaint to a state agency. Doctor, that is a lie. This is not true, doctor. Matter of fact, Linda Cornelson's parents made a complaint. Cheryl McCollins told you to remove the electrodes from her son's arms. She withdrew her consent and you did it anyway. These kids have made reports. And we know this doctor because we have them all. That's right, folks. Included in Autistic Hoya's massive archive is the numerous DESI reports where students, parents, and concerned community members have come forward and did exactly that, made complaints to the state. And in fact, DESI has had to come and investigate these situations time and again at the JRC, including a situation which involved one of the staff sexually harassing a student. Okay, grooming a young man. Yeah, about that, right? Again, doctor, did you think that the MDRI did not make the UN Special Repertoire on Torture aware that we had a massive archive with receipts? No. The doctor wants to believe that because his, he is a doctor, that the UN will take his word over ours. This is an individual with such arrogance because of his Ivy League school training and his fucking insane ideas of how to build a utopia. He doesn't seem to comprehend the intelligence of those he calls so-called little people. In particular, he really, really underestimated autistics. We like to collect receipts. That's exactly what Lydia Brown did with that massive living archive. We can show you that this is a lie. We've got the DESI reports. We've got the court case reports. We've got the ER documents. And we've got testimonies from the survivors, doctor. These particular survivors are no longer under threat of the shock device. Told the truth. Their accounts, as much as Matthew Isier wants you to believe it's exaggerated and just not true, have been backed up by JRC's own surveillance footage. So much for his bullshit, right? We're going to make this video short and sweet and get to the heart of it. Once again, he's gaslighting us. Very obviously, too. He is blatantly lying because he thinks that people are too lazy 
to do their own research. Facts are, those of us who've been in this fight for years know better than to be gaslit with this shit. We know their lies. We have read the Desi reports. Individuals have tried to complain. As far as those he's talking about who are still in that school, gee, I wonder why they haven't made a complaint. You've only made a place where they are basically almost never allowed to leave, and the few times that they are, there have staff members five feet back with a remote control device. How the fuck are they going to go and tell someone? What about the fact that I know that you monitor these kids when they talk to their parents on the phones in their residences? What about the fact I know you control the information that goes in and out, except when ordered by a court otherwise? Yeah, we're sleuthers, folks. Never piss off an autistic. Okay? Because we'll never let you forget it. All this is a lie. And he wants us to believe it because believe all doctors. Kind of sounds like believe all women, doesn't it? It doesn't really work when held up to scrutiny. Particularly when we know there are actual laws created on the behalf of patients to be enforced if malpractice and insidious underhandings are happening in regards to a particular individual's treatment. Doctors are not above scrutiny. They are not above the law. And they sure as hell can't sit there and just lie with their whole fucking chest when we have all the receipts. We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So folks, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit those comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.